Thanks, Joel, for that nice talk. So I'm going to be on the pro-expandable side debating Stephen Ryu. These are my disclosures. They are re relevant to this talk, so take a grain of salt. Um, so Steve is a really smart guy, you know, a really nice guy. He has a, almost a five on health grades. He's at Stanford. You know, he gave this amazing talk last year at, at Napa, how he's you know, developing brain learning. But you know, after this debate, I think he's concentrating more on brain surgery. I know he's a neurosurgeon, so I think he, um, that's the only advantage that I have. So anyways, I'm going to argue that expandable TLIF is better. And so for a 4 or 5 spondy, you know, we've talked about this a million times, a uh, very acceptable treatment option is an MIS TLIF. So classically, you know, got the slip, severe stenosis. So um, I'm going to argue that it's safer. Uh, clinically, patients uh, um, do better. Also, radiographic parameters, debatable, but I do think that there's some real advantages, especially with the newer implants out there. So as an illustrative case, I have a 60-year-old female, you know, a little osteopenic, but otherwise healthy. And uh, she has a pretty mobile spondylolisthesis at L4-5. Tell she has a lot, you know, pretty big disc space, very, um, a lot of angular instability. So you want to get some good stability in, in, in something like this, in a patient like this. So these are the axial cuts, the, the sagittals, again, classically stenosis. So this is a case where I used a, a static cage where in a case like this, I want to get a large cage in. Also, get a lordotic cage in, and uh, I distracted off the screws. Everything went great, got a nice decompression, put the cage in. Uh, because the cage was big and lordotic, I had to do a little distraction. So, you know, everything went well, got the fluoros, AP, lateral, everything's parallel. And then when you file tighten, you see the, the screw window wash a little bit. So take a look right there, that's the one before I file tighten, and uh, on the I guess you're right, you can see that the screw window wash a little bit, so you have that you know, sinking feeling, what do I do? Um, at that time, I got some pretty good fixation on the contra last. I had a big cage, so I decided to not do much more and just watch the patient. Again, looking closely at the AP, so before, after, so problem. Anyways, I, I follow this patient closely, put her in a brace, you know, uh, said no bending, lifting, and twisting, gave her the whole spiel. Did very well, followed instruction, very good patient. Two months post-op, see this happen. So this patient eventually went out to do a revision ALIF. Anyway, so this is a clear case where that a expandable cage would have been beneficial where you get a larger cage in and a patient with a large disc space. Also, this patient was osteopenic too, so you definitely don't want to distract off the, the screws or, or distract too much to get that larger cage in. So, um, you know, I know it's tough in the literature that you get plus or minus segmental lordosis in some of these uh, stat, you know, expandable cages. So, but I think the main advantage is that you know, up to six percent of the time you have some migration in the cage. So, if you could prevent that back out in those in those cases, then I think it's worth it. You get a nice large cage in without risk of nerve root injury and end plate violation. And also, I'd argue that it helps with your direct decompression. So, you put in a cage, expand it tightens everything up, so it helps you with your direct decompression also. Another case, a similar patient profile, spondy, severe stenosis. Case where I did an expandable cage, you know, you see that um, they don't have that problem. So I borrowed these from Chol, but uh, just to illustrate a point, so in a patient with a large disc space, if you want to get a large cage in, it's hard to without, you know, banging up the end plates or even banging up the exiting nerve root. So if you, case like this, you know, did a one level T lift, expandable, you see that there's no end plate violation. Also, you see a nice fusion in the front. And if you look at these uh, disc space, height, space heights after the cage placement, you see that the, the height is maintained. So anyways, I do think, strongly believe that this is uh, better. You know, like we argue it's more expensive, blah, blah, blah. However, I do think that it has some real clinical advantages. And I didn't even mention, you know, under the, under the, the term expandable, you have medial and lateral expansion too. So biomechanical studies show that you know, these are very stable cages with even uh, the stability of A-lift. So yeah, I'm going to talk more about the up and down expandable, but uh, that's a whole other topic. Thank you.